Okay. Let me see if I can do anything from my side here. Close chat. Okay. Uh, on behalf of uh, the Egyptian Fellowship uh, and Case Study Group, I welcome you on board. It's nice to meet every Tuesday, and it, my, it is my pleasure today to welcome Professor Samar Kosayer, Professor uh, Ahmed Ali Nahas from Syria, uh, Dr. Omar Al Farouk, and uh, our colleagues uh, from Egypt. Today we are going to discuss a nice paper recently published in the uh, uh, journal of Vascar Surgery. Uh, the title covered versus perimetal case extent for reconstruction of aortic bifurcation in iliac registry. Uh, it will be presented by Dr. Ahmed El Arif, Ahmed El Arif, in the third year of the uh, vascular fellowship and he's a very nice uh, guy and uh, hard worker and uh, uh, doing very well in during all his career. I think uh, today he will give us uh, a great presentation. Please, Dr. Ahmed, uh, you can start. Okay. Uh, you. Ayman, do you want to give a couple minutes, Ayman? Uh, just to get some more people to join. What do you think? Just like maybe three, four minutes more. It's okay. Okay. Uh, Maybe discuss. Just like two more uh, let minutes. us look. Yes, yeah, so, uh, wait for five minutes more. Uh, let's ask uh, about his journey in the States. Tell us uh, what's new in the States nowadays. Uh, the, the new thing is that mask policy, it is over now. It's a, it is an optional. You don't have to wear a mask, you know, a mask. Because the new study showed if you are full vaccinated, you don't need to have a mask. And you don't know who's full and who's not full vaccinated, so they just open it for everyone. So it's an optional. So when you go to the mall, you go any place. Uh, you, you don't put it up to you. But about 50 of people past life is back to normal. Everything's open. Restaurants are open. Uh, uh, movie theaters are open. Everything is open. You know, they work. They work full capacity. Yeah, this is yeah. Good everything is open now. This is good yeah. News. And the housing market there is going Three. sky high. I don't know why, but the housing market is just sky high <laughs> for some reason. You know, yeah. Housing in Asia. Sure. Yeah, you can go to movie. The same, right? Open now. Uh, yes, but we still have uh, the mask uh, policy. It is not optional. It is mandatory oh, okay. still in Egypt. It but uh, a lot of people have been... Okay. Okay. The same in, in Saudi, it's still the same. <laughs> <laughs> but Finan uh, the Masjah 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 going well. Finan Masjah 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 Masjah. Uh, welcome on board. He joined us today, Dafir. He joined us today, Dafir. So we have to welcome Dafir. Uh, great. Great. Hi, Hi everyone. everyone. Hi, everyone. Happy to be here. Nice to hear from you. Great, great to meet you guys. Great to see you. Alaikum Salam, Dr. Ali. Salam Alaikum. السلام عليكم على البدل الجميل دوت. عليكم السلام. للجميع. دكتور نخاس، ويلكم فروم سيريا. ثانك يو بروفيسور ايمن. ناو وي هاف جريت مساء الخير يا جماعة. This is good opportunity to meet uh, friends from Syria from Hello, Great to see you. Same here, Allah. Zaki Ahmed. دكتور علي؟ لا انا مش قصدي على عماد الكبير عماد الكبير ده هنقول عماد بيه انا قصدي على الوضع عماد الصغير. ازيك يا فندم ازيك سيادتك يا دكتور علي؟ 
ازيك يا عماد ازيك يا حبيبي الحمد لله الحمد لله بخير انت يعني حظك حلو النهارده خمس اساتذه يعني كل واحد منهم ما شاء الله يعني فندم ربنا يخليهم لينا يا فندم وكل سيادتك اهو اه ويخرجك منهم على خير يعني مش كده؟ خير ان شاء الله دكتور عماد بحسين مساء الفل عليك يا جميل اهلا بالغالي اهلا بالغالي دكتور علي بيه ربنا يكرمك وحشنا والله الله ينعم على الكورونا اللي خلاها مش عارفين يشوف بعض دوت والله بقت زي الاحلام بس يعني عشان ما ربنا كبير ان شاء الله يا عم كبير قريب. ان شاء الله كبير ان شاء الله كنا بنقابل المجموعه الدكتور سمير والمجموعه كلها كنا بنقابلهم كل سنه في السعودي الالماني بقى لنا سنتين ثلاثه ما تقابلناش اهو دكتور سامر مساء الخير يا حبيبي مساء الخيرات يا هلا مساء الخيرات وي ميس يو جايز ريلي وي ميس يو الات والله يا نور ده بس سامر ذا بيج ترافلر احنا هنلتقي بيه قريبا سموير متهيألي عندي هذا الاحساس ان شاء الله ان شاء الله وي ميت سموير اتس انف يو نو وي هاد انف فروم ذيس كوفيد اي ثينك وي كان ستارت ايمن وات دو يو ثينك؟ يس اي ثينك Yeah. We have a uh, few friends. I think it's a good time to start. Please, Ahmed, uh, the, the mic is yours. Go ahead, dear. Thank you, Professor Ayman, for your uh, uh, introduction. Uh, I do welcome all of my dear professors and colleagues. Uh, today, we are going to discuss uh, this paper, um, uh, presenting this paper appraisal. Uh, titled as Covered vers uh, versus Pair Metal Kissing Distance for Reconstruction of the aortic bifurcation in the iliac uh, gesture. This paper uh, was uh, published uh, uh, last uh, month um, um, uh, in the Journal of Vascular Surgery, Volume uh, 73. Uh, it was uh, done by uh, many authors um, uh, like uh, Michael Atmello and Etel. Uh, this uh, 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 study was conducted in Italy in many different cardiovascular uh, and vascular surgery departments. Uh, in uh, many uh, Italian uh, centers, about 15 centers uh, participated in this uh, study. Uh, this study was a retrospective multi-center observation, uh, observational cohort study. Uh, the authors introduced their study uh, stating that open surgery has been traditionally considered the reference standard for the treatment of auto-iliac occlusive disease involving the aortic bifurcation. However, uh, the larger amount of the morbidity and the mortality can limit this application, especially in the old age and high risk patients. Uh, and during the past decade, uh, the great improvement in the uh, endovascular techniques and the material made the endovascular approach uh, can be accepted as a first line uh, for this uh, management. Uh, the authors uh, defined their kissing distinct or putting distinct technique um, um, as uh, being both right and left iliac stent protruded uh, into the distal aorta with parallel conformation and completely covering the aortic bifurcation. Um, here is uh, a picture to remind uh, us uh, about the task uh, to classification regarding class uh, C and D, uh, which uh, were selected for this study, including the total occlusion uh, bilaterally and the long uh, segment uh, stenosis. Uh, which the authors uh, uh, choose to uh, put the testing extent in these lesions. Uh, also, here is a picture to differentiate between the kissing technique and the syrup technique, uh, where the uh, cut section uh, at the aortic bifurcation in kissing distance will only contain uh, two parallel stents, uh, and it will be the same uh, approximately. While in the syrup technique, the uh, both stents will be enclosed and covered uh, aortic stent. Uh, at the uh, bifurcation. Uh, uh, and uh, just to remind, the syrup technique is not uh, included in this study. The aim of the current study was to compare the early and the midterm outcomes of the covered stent and perimeter stent used in a kissing confirmation for reconstruction of the aortic bifurcation in aorta area uh, obstruction. Uh, the study design was a retrospective multicentric observation cohort study which was conducted from uh, 2015 to 2019. Uh, the data was uh, collected from uh, uh, 1,306 patients who undergone in the last treatment of the auto uh, iliac uh, obstructive disease in 15 Italian centers, as uh, I mentioned before. Uh, the study design uh, regarding the inclusion uh, criteria, uh, the authors uh, included uh, the patients who suffered from uh, TASCD and TASCD uh, lesions involving the aortic bifurcation 
provide and uh, bilateral area extending with kissing the technique. Also, the patient suffering uh, uh, with disease extending to the extended area artery and underdone in the vascular management also were, were included. Uh, patients also with uh, obstruction of the common femoral artery who needed hybrid technique for uh, the common femoral artery with uh, common femoral in the artery may also be uh, uh, included. Uh, the indication for surgery included the lifestyle limitation, uh, limiting lubrication, wrist pain, and ischemic tissue loss, and also a uh, retinal informed consent. Uh, exclusion criteria, any patient without kissing the confirmation, uh, even if it was uh, deployed bilaterally, were excluded from the study. A patient was treated, uh, were treated with uh, syrup technique also were excluded. And if there is uh, well no, uh, well, uh, no uh, sufficient data about the stent uh, regarding the H5O or technique, uh, were also uh, executed. Regarding the diagnosis of the disease, the authors uh, used the uh, uh, dependent on uh, physical examination, uh, Doppler examination, anti pressure pressure index assessment, uh, Doppler ultrasound, NCT and geography. Uh, also, the authors uh, put their own uh, classific uh, classification for the uh, degree of the calcification of the aortic bifurcation. Uh, uh, they classified it uh, into no classification, mild and moderate and severe classification, depending on the circumference of the uh, calcification. Uh, also, uh, the authors is dependent on uh, local anesthesia mainly for dental intervention, while the uh, sedation or general anesthesia were uh, used as preferred, and especially for the non-cooperative patients. Uh, also, uh, they depended on bilateral epilateral common femoral artery access, uh, usually obtained, while uh, they presented the contralateral femoral approach and the uh, brachial approach for the uh, difficult cases or the more complex cases. Uh, also, they depended on intraluminal recanalization rather than subintimal recanalization, which was preserved uh, mainly for the difficult cases or more complex uh, cases. Uh, they uh, mainly used the two stents with us. Uh, we lost. Oh, uh, I'm going. Go on, Ahmed. Ahmed, are you still with us? Uh, we cannot hear you, Ahmed. Probably is facing some uh, technical problems. Can you hear me? Yes. May I try the tech Can you hear me now? Dr. Ahmed Arif. You hear me now? Ye yes, we can hear you, but we cannot see okay. your screen. Now, can you see it? It's on and off. Now, yes, now we, we can, can see the screen and we can hear you. Okay, you okay, thank you. Okay, regarding, as I mentioned, uh, regarding the technique. Ahmed, Ahmed Arif. Ahmed Arif. Yes. A bit slowly. Okay. Ahmed. Ahmed. Ahmed Arif. I think there is a problem with Ahmed's voice, and uh, I think we can continue scientific conversation <laughs> until Ahmed comes back. Amen. من فضلكم يا جماعة نعمل كلنا ميوت للمايكات عشان فيه دوشة. 
Uh, Ayman, you can do that. You are the host. You can mute everyone. Okay, I'll do it. I cannot do it now. I'm muted already. So can any can everyone hear me and see the screen? Yes, yes. Please go on. Okay. I was speaking about the uh, technique. Uh, uh, the ulcers depended on the intraluminal recanalization, while the subintimal recanalization was reserved for the cases uh, uh, where the uh, intraluminal recanalization was unsuccessful. Uh, they used the two stents of the same type and the same diameter where they were deployed simultaneously uh, in the most uh, common inner artery up to the distal aorta. Uh, generally, they put the stent uh, from healthy to healthy artery uh, to cover the diseased uh, area. Um, Post-operatively, they used the dual antiplatelet therapy uh, for uh, more than one month, followed by long-term single antiplatelet therapy. Uh, also, they uh, uh, used the balloon expandable stent for the focal and the ulterior lesions, while the self-expanding stent were preferred for uh, cases where the disease extended to the external iliac artery, especially in presence of uh, uh, atrocity. Uh, Permetal stents were favored for the focal non-calcified stenosis, while the covered stent were mostly used for uh, long or severely calcified lesions, also in the presence of thrombus or sub leg normalization. A technical success was defined as successful recanalization and deployment of both stents uh, in a testing technique to establish the vessel patency with residual stenosis of less than 30% of the circumference. Uh, regarding the follow-up, they followed up the patients at 1 and the 6 and uh, 12 months and then annually. Uh, they performed GT injury when needed. Uh, they followed up the early medical and surgical complications uh, up to uh, 15 days. Uh, 30 days. Uh, the, uh, they recorded also the primary and secondary patency rates and the daily service rates, uh, comparing between the covered and the perimeter states. Regarding the complication or the early complications, they documented medical and surgical complications. Medical complications uh, including the myocardial infarction, dysarrhythmia, respiratory failure, and the acute renal insufficiency. Uh, regarding the surgical complication, the arterial access complications, bowel ischemia requiring the surgical section for int uh, intensive care uh, admission, uh, also uh, embolization of thrombosis, uh, one complication, and intraoperative iliac rupture were uh, documented. Regarding the statistical analysis, uh, the continuous data uh, were presented as mean, standard deviation, median, and range, while the integral data uh, were presented as frequencies and percentages. Continuous variable will compare the use in Wilcoxon rank some test or key test as appropriate. Pearson C2 test official exact uh, test uh, were used for analysis of the category uh, variables. The propensity score uh, was estimated using the justification. The baseline demographic and anatomic data like occlusion, stenosis, disease extension to the abdominal aorta or external iliac artery, the calcification grade, task classification and the, uh, the central performing the procedure were considered as the initial one. Regarding the results, uh, the data were collected from 1,306 patients. Um, uh, only uh, 336 patients were uh, selected, where the 60% received the cover distance and 40% received the bare metal distance. After applying the MIST score for matching post groups, the uh, cover distance and bare metal distance, only 220 patients were selected, uh, where the 50% received the covered stent and the 50% received per metal stent. The technical success rate in both matched and unmatched results were about 99% up to 100% in the matched study. The overall primary patency rate was about 89% uh, in the unmatched study, while uh, 92% uh, in the matched uh, study. The three uh, years estimated primary patency rate in the unmatched study was about 91% uh, for the covered stent versus 93% uh, for the uh, permit stents. While in the matched uh, uh, study it was equal about 92%. Uh, uh, the secondary patency rate in uh, the unmatched uh, study was about 99% for the covered stent 
versus uh, 98% for the permanent residents, and it was equal in the uh, mentioned study, around 98%. Uh, Here is the uh, table including the early three days results uh, regarding the complication, which may happen the like um, uh, arterial dissection, equalization, wound deficiency during the uh, first uh, 50 days post operatively. Also, uh, it was noted that post operative uh, ABPI uh, showing significant improvement uh, using the uh, cover stent in comparison with repair metal stents. Uh, the limbus salvage rate was similar between uh, cover stent and repair metal stents. Also, the necessity uh, for using uh, serum devices for uh, surgical interject for the common femoral artery was similar between both groups. Uh, it was also noted that uh, while using the, when using the cover stent, uh, usually a uh, cover stent will be deployed using uh, a loan mount, uh, using uh, self-expandable stent rather than a loan expandable stent. And also uh, the cover stent usually requires subcutaneous iliac recanalization rather than uh, intraluminal uh, recanalization. Uh, the five, uh, there was also five intraoperative iliac capture cases. Uh, uh, and they were managed by deploying uh, covered kissing stents. Arterial rupture was uh, more frequent using prepared metal stents, and there was the low mortality rate. Uh, uh, mortality rate was about 0% during the first 30 days. Uh, uh, regarding the type of the stent, uh, it uh, showed uh, there is no significant uh, effect on the secondary patency rate using uh, the covered or the prepared metal stents. Uh, here is a table indicating uh, that uh, um, uh, the older the age and the stent diameter of 8 mm uh, or more usually will be associated with uh, significant uh, uh, longer primary patency rate uh, regardless of the type of the uh, stent. Uh, regarding the discussion, the authors discussed that uh, uh, increased use of the intravascular technique uh, techniques for the treatment of the complex our for any occasions and the more frequent use of the stent, showing that the public state of the treated pathology has increased throughout the years and that uh, more were evidently uh, treated with cover stent may represent as a selection bias because the limiting fair comparison between the cover stent and permeter stent in the previous uh, series or studies. So they also they performed the community score to do a matched study to compare between the cover stent and permeter stent uh, for the achievement of the aorto uh, 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 The authors concluded that uh, the use of the casting distance in the treatment of aortic bifurcation provides a good early and mid-term result. The cover distance uh, will be preferred for the more complex lesions and will protect it from any capture and allow for greater antiplical pressure index improvement. The three years patency rate were similar between the uh, cover distance and permit distance. Cover stent to show improvement in the result in case uh, of the moderate to severe calcification. Uh, the angle of the age and the use of the casing stent uh, less than 8 mm uh, diameter will really will be associated with loss of latency regardless of the type of the stent. Regarding the points of strength of this uh, study, it was a multi-centric study uh, performed in well-recognized uh, centers in Italy. Uh, it was uh, conducted on a suitable sample size. Uh, there was a clear objective in comparing between the early and mid-term outcomes of the cover stent and perimeter stent using as the casing information. Uh, and also uh, the, the simplicity of the statistical analysis uh, enabled the authors to create the score and establish implementation on the uh, vascular practice. Regarding, uh, regarding the points of focus of this study, uh, only variables collected in the data base we are able to be assessed and further variable could be needed. Uh, also the indication for surgery including life style limiting medication with the pain and the ischemic loss uh, where the decisions uh, regarding the indication of the treatment or surgical technique and the stent time uh, were left to each participating center. Uh, also uh, the retrograde femoral approach um, uh, carries a high risk for uh, propagation of uh, bisection up to uh, the distal aorta. Uh, regarding the appraisal of the study, uh, does this uh, uh, research question have based validity? Yes. Uh, regarding uh, the authors who were equipped to uh, conduct this study, uh, sure. Uh, does this study allow for answering the stated objective? Yes. 
Uh, was a study population appropriate? Should those conducted on population on appropriate population? Um, are there concerns with cystic amniotic? Yes. Are there a problem with sample size? No. Where's the group uh, comparable? Yes. Do you agree with the author's conclusion? Yes, I do. Will this study change your clinical practice? Sure, because uh, this study showed that other stent will add no value in most of the cases than low increasing stent configuration for treatment of the old iliac lesions except the incidentally classified vessels. Also, by use of post stent over 8 mm and the patient should be taken with caution because of the viability for arterial eruption. And thank you, dear professors, for your uh, listening. And uh, I hope you um, um, get proper information from this study. Thank you, Ahmed. You made a uh, good presentation, and uh, also you made uh, a nice uh, evaluation and analysis. Uh, also, uh, your appraisal was... Uh, uh, suitable and you touched many points. Uh, uh, I will start by uh, weakness of the study. Uh, let us ask Professor Nahas. Professor Nahas, uh, please unmute yourself. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I, th I think you heard the study and regarding uh, the weak points of the study, do you agree for uh, approaching uh, the totally occluded or tightly stenosed uh, iliac arteries on both sides from retrograde approach? Uh, or do you think uh, this uh, could be uh, the point that uh, uh, why the authors had uh, many rupture of iliac veins uh, during uh, angioplasty? Good evening uh, to everyone. I want to thank you for this, uh, this opportunity. Uh, really, we think that in these days, we, all of us, we use uh, the, the uh, PTA stenting of, to treat iliac lesions. Uh, most of our lesions are treated in this way. Uh, for what I use here uh, in my center, I always use the retrograde approach. I rarely use the anti-grade uh, through the brachial artery to uh, re-enter these, uh, these arteries. I use the intimal, intra-intimal, intraluminal, and the subintimal sometimes. Uh, this is the way that I, uh, I, uh, I do my cases here in Syria. Uh, we have good results. Uh, we uh, treat all these patients, as uh, I said. Uh, the only question that I was uh, thinking about, I want to, to ask uh, you, uh, uh, you and Samer and Dr. Farouk, Dr. Ahmed Bin Hussain, uh, what you think about how many millimeters we should go over the bifurcation uh, or uh, above the bifurcation of the water uh, just to have uh, to do this, uh, this technique? Uh, is there a limit that you, uh, you uh, use or you, uh, you can go up for one centimeter or one or more or less like this. This is a good point uh, for developing a new carina. Uh, you mean, uh, yeah. how, how can you do the, develop new carina? Okay, let us ask uh, Omar. A new bifurcation, what yeah. What yes, do you yes, think? yes. For developing the new carina, uh, uh, let, tell me uh, what's your experience in this point, Omar. Yes, it's a, it's a very good question. It shows how vast experience uh, Professor Nahas has. Well, the basic idea whenever you got an aortoiliac disease, that the bifurcation is full of disease, both from the aorta and the iliac side. The initial mistake was the initial kissing balloon design, which was just the two stent touching each other in the iliac bifurcation, we did face a huge amount of uh, my intimal hyperplasia above the stent causing occlusion. That is why uh, it has converted the technique from kissing into a hugging technique. The change have little bit changed. Every paper have its own definition. If you can see the picture, 
uh, of kissing stint in this paper, he actually done a hugging stint, which means half of the stint in the aorta and the other half in the iliac artery. The best answer you will get if you are using the IVAS device. It will tell you exactly what is the luminal narrowing. The best idea to go above the bifurcation until you see at least 30% stenosis in the aorta. Anything more than this, you will face a problem by having an occlusion. And the problem, if you are using CRAP technique, will even become tougher because you already occluded the collateral, which is your plan B. This is being cut off. So how much far you go in, my answer will be to go to the minimal diseased aorta. You wouldn't see non-diseased aorta. It's very, very unusual in these cases that you see normal aorta. But I would accept anything up to 30% stenosis in the aorta, and I will take my stent from this point to the normal point in the iliac artery. This is the safest possible way that uh, I do. Regarding the crossing, uh, I wouldn't mind the crossing, either ballerina crossing or side-by-side -side crossing. You can do your own design. It doesn't make a difference. Uh, but this is how far I would go to make the carina, from normal aorta or minimal diseased aorta, to be exact, to minimal disease, the iliac, to be exact. So this is my answer to the question. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Thank you, Omar. Uh, uh, I may ask uh, Samer. Please, Samer, what do you think? Uh, uh, now we have two questions. Is it safe to go retrograde the subintimal and uh, start to make your angioplasty and you may face rupture of the iliacs? Uh, and uh, how can you develop your new carina? Okay, guys. Uh, first, I'd like to congratulate Tian uh, for the presentation. It was a very nice presentation, uh, Dr. Ayman. Um, for the approach, as Dr. Ali said, I go from femoral retrograde. But I, I always put my big tail, I mean, if he has both iliac like, occlusion, I go from brachial to know where my, my exit area, you know. So I need to do an aortogram. So I go put a big one from the brachial to an angiogram, and then start from below. But, of course, you're going to go and some, also then you go sub -antimal. The problem is that you should not go more than healthy aorta. And aorta is very dangerous when you go sub -antimal, you know. <laughs> so when, when I see my wire going really high, you know, but by application sub then I stop. Yes, I can get entry higher, but you don't want to get entry in the middle of the aorta, you know, because you can stand the aorta sub which you don't, it's not good. It's good to stand the iliac sub but the aorta sub So when I get this point, then I'll stop and go from brachial, and brachial is much easier, but I don't start with the brachial because the complication was the uh, entry side at the brachial, you know, uh, but usually brachial is much easier. But I always start from the ilia, uh, from the uh, uh, from the femoral and go retrograde, but any time I see I'm going in sub in the aorta, then I'll just, I will not push it, you know. Uh, this is very important. Don't try to go sub in the aorta because uh, you can get with a rupture. And I saw a couple cases of rupture from that. Uh, regarding how far you need to go, I mean, I agree with Dr. Omar. I mean, the most part to go to the healthy aorta because most failure happen from the inflow. So you need to go to healthy aorta. Don't worry about that. The only re reason you want to keep the ballerina because you want to contract in the future, so you want to could do contract a limb. But it's not an issue. You know, if you use uncovered stent, not an issue because you can go through the stress of the stent and you still you can go contralateral. If it's a cover stent, it's a problem, but it's not an issue. You always you can go break. So I will not limit my you know stent because of future. I just solve the problem which I have it now, which is this aorta. So you need to go to the healthy aorta. It doesn't matter how far you go. Sometimes you go to the mid uh, aorta. It doesn't matter. But you have to get to the healthy aorta. Otherwise, you'll end with a failure, you know. Uh, uh, I hope I answered your two questions. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, now, I, uh, I'd like to ask uh, Dr. Ahmed, uh, uh, do you think uh, uh, the covered stent had... Uh, a more perfect uh, design and it may give better results uh, for uh, crossing stents or this paper may change your practice 
Dr. Ahmed Hussain, please uh, unmute yourself. Yes, uh, Dr. Ayman. Uh, again, um, it's hard to tell that uh, we had a, a real uh, paradigm shift in our practice um, because of, uh, of this paper, uh, which I read quite carefully. Uh, again, I would like first to start by congratulating Dr. Ahmed Arif uh, for the um, precise and uh, kind of uh, actually um, good educational presentation. Uh, but um, cover stents themselves um, would be of help, especially in complex uh, eccentric lesions rather than concentric ones and longer lesions, and of course, they protect us all from uh, the um, uh, possibility of a ruptured aorta, because when you have a shaggy aorta uh, and an extending uh, plaque uh, to both iliacs, uh, that is a very tricky lesion. I had my plate uh, partially full with uh, some subintimal uh, passage, uh, but uh, Probably I was lucky uh, in some of the cases uh, I have done that uh, it ended up in a couple of cases by um, a subintimal deployment of the stent uh, and uh, recurrence of the symptoms uh, a few months later. Rupture is always there and that's a nightmare to all of us, but cover stents in general um, are, uh, represent an asset that we have in our hand. I agree with and I'm echoing what has been mentioned by both uh, Omar and Samer, uh, that um, we did not uh, all uh, quite liberally embrace the uh, syrup technique because the idea of uh, an open-ended deployment of the both stents uh, till anywhere in the aorta, that's, that's yeah, yeah, a little bit uh, tricky. Uh, hemodynamics are uh, much disturbed and uh, we can uh, reconstruct literally um, the inferior vena cava in case the cava is occluded, that's on the venous side, but to have a semi-reconstructed aorta plus the iliacs, you are never sure you'll get away with that. So um, I hope I've answered your question, but uh, um, this point again is one of the weaknesses in the paper uh, probably alluded to, but not frankly mentioned by uh, Dr. Ahmed Ali. Great, thank you. Dr. Doffer, uh, I think uh, you mentioned uh, a good point in the chat regarding the similar approach. Uh, please unmute yourself, Dr. Doffer, and uh, uh, tell, us, uh, tell us about your point of view for the similar approach. Yes, uh, thank you for the opportunity. I enjoyed the presentation and the discussion so much. Uh, what, uh, when you have an aorto iliac or you have bilateral iliac uh, chronic occlusion, usually this is mostly atherosclerotic. So in that case, I would be more comfortable performing a bilateral uh, aorto iliac stent, uh, totally endovascular. But when you have a uh, distal aortic occlusion with, uh, with a combination of atherosclerosis and, uh, and the thrombus, chronic thrombus, and you go in and totally endovascular and, uh, and uh, do your kissing stent successfully, I just wonder what, happened with the, what happens with the crushed uh, thrombus that will, it will most likely Either it will be crushed against the wall or it will move down. So my, my worry is if it moves downstream uh, and you're doing totally endovascular, this is, this is uh, to me, it's a worry. So I would think that in case of aortic occlusion, uh, which is combined atherosclerosis plus a, a chronic aortoiliac thrombus, I would think a safer way will be to do a, an open cut down on the femoral artery and flush it after I uh, put the, the two stents. That's what I think would do. I don't know what's the experience of uh, the panel. Yes, it is a good point. Uh, I think uh, it, uh, it, was, it? it. It is a good point, and I think we don't have uh, 
uh, ready-made answer uh, because uh, I don't think there's a head-to-head -head study comparing uh, both technique, but I think, uh, I think in Samir, the future... I think Samir wants to, to give his opinion. I yes, yes, but I, 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 uh, I want to tell my opinion that we don't have head-to-head -head study. But I, I see Samer and uh, uh, Dr. Ahmed wants to comment on this uh, point. Uh, uh, it's okay. Go ahead, Samer. You want to start, Ahmed? It's okay. I, too much, I don't want to talk too much. Uh, Ahmed, you can go ahead, please. Please okay, go ahead, Sam. I'll talk. Please go ahead. I'll, I'll okay. Okay. Uh, I mean, yes, it's a concern, a dolphin, and I see that mobilization sometimes, and especially when your wire goes very easy, you know, because you have water conclusive disease, you have to struggle to you get your wire throat. So if your wire goes easy, then you have a clot, and chronic clot, and this makes me, you know, uh, worry about embolization. One, two things I do. First, I do primary sending. I don't do balloon. So when I, after I cross it, I just do primary sending right away, because if you balloon it, you have a chance of embolization. The second thing, this clot has to go somewhere. It goes up or down. So when the occlusion is very close from the renal, I don't do endovascular. I do open because the clot is going to move up, you know. But when I'm away at least 2 centimeters from the renal, then I do endovascular. But when I do blow my stent, I do at least 1 centimeter in the healthy aorta because I know the clot is going to move up. So if you put your stent exactly where the healthy aorta, then the, move, the clot will move up. It may include your stent. So I go at least one centimeter to healthy aorta. The reason why when I do an endovascular, at, at least in my opinion, you have to get this two centimeter below the renals, you know, and just do primary, you know, standing. And sometimes what happened, I compress the femoral artery in both sides, the common femoral artery, uh, just to take the clot, if any clot goes to the internal iliac, you know, this is technique, you can do it. But it is a concern, but you just have to take it easy, don't oversize it, you know. Do by me stenting and go above the healthy water at least one centimeters. The second thing I used to do a syrup technique, you know, before for this lesion, and then I stopped because syrup technique you put a large stent in the water, and this is also you push more clot up or down. If you use too long a stent like VBX, then you have more space between the stent, so they can you know squeeze the clot between them. But if you do a syrup technique, then you have a large stent in the water, then this will compress the clot up or down. So now I'm doing too long uh, stand better than syrup technique. I stopped doing syrup technique because of that. This is my 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 experience. I think uh, Doffer was talking about chronic thrombus, not about clot. He was yeah, the same. I mean, clot is the same. I'm talking about the same thing. It will be a chronic. Yeah. We talk about chronic because an acute you do thrombolysis. I'm talking about chronic clot. Yes, but even yeah. chronic clot can embolize. You know. Especially yes. if your wire went easy, go easy. So you have to be careful, you know. The question, if you have a clot, you, you prefer to make aspiration or leave it? Uh, you would like to aspirate uh, the newly formed clot? I mean, uh, if it's a wire went very easy, you can too use Rotarex. I use it that, but I didn't like it really because it was fragment the clot and goes more embolizations. Yes. So I stopped doing that because some people said, you know, because it's a, it's a thick clot, so when you do the Rotarex, you just flag it, and then you get embolization. So now I stop doing that. I just do primary stenting, and be very gentle with the embolize with the ballooning, and again go to the healthy area and try to compress the common femoral. Ninety percent you get away with that. If you get an embolization, then you just do uh, interact. You, then you open the femoral, but I don't like to open femoral for everyone because ninety percent you will not get embolizations. Okay, great. Uh, waiting for you, Ahmed. Uh, yes, sir. Um, thank you, Samir. Spared me uh, a lot of talking that might have taken uh, some time. But if I would like to wrap it up, and um, once again, uh, I agree totally with what Samir just said. Three steps are crucial for the safe and easier uh, procedure in exactly what we're talking about, and uh, as often mentioned, a possibility of uh, harboring a chronic thrombus over there, um, and that would be embolizing at a certain point of time. Number one, and that's exactly what I do, uh, if I contemplate from the very beginning a total correction of the aortoiliac bifurcation, I just put a pigtail from up transbrachial, and then I would take very good pictures in the beginning, 
show me both the extent of the calcification and the presence or absence of any thrombotic element. Uh, number two, uh, if I find this unlucky surprise of uh, either in the carina or one of the iliacs uh, harboring that uh, part, uh, the fresh component of it uh, with our healthcare system, which is sometimes deficient in supplying us with iris or whatever, which are brilliant, of course, if, if we have it, but uh, otherwise a 50 milliliter syringe from below and um, end hole would be probably uh, helpful in aspirating that uh, dangerous element that may represent a hurdle uh, during the procedure or even uh, a threat. And then number three, um, in that case, I would be, uh, again, as uh, Samer said, going uh, one and a half to two centimeters in the aorta, no more. Uh, what Dr. Uh, Omar uh, um, called uh, the minimal um, uh, black harboring uh, aorta, uh, not at all going um, further than 20% of the length of the abdominal aorta because um, here at this uh, stage, uh, collaterals are so precious and unlike uh, using, for instance, cover stents or uh, stent grafts like a via band type, in the femorals uh, where the damage might be limited if we lose the collaterals, but uh, in the aorta and autoiliacs, the situation is different. Uh, oversizing, again, um, is an asset, but probably no more than uh, 20 or 25 percent. Thank you, Ahmed. Uh, I'd like to ask Martin, uh, please omit uh, yourself, Martin, and I'd like to ask you, uh, in your practice, do you think the covered stent added a value for uh, casing stent in the aortoiliac disease? Yeah, good evening, Ayman. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I like the presentation very much. It was very well done. Uh, there is not much of controversy about this topic. The, the whole issue, what is, is you can see, what we are discussing, are the technical details because there is always, you know, an issue how far you stand, uh, how you position it, and how you make uh, the sizing. Uh, the covered stand will give you always the security in regard of the of the rupture, so it makes difference. On the other hand, uh, covered stands are much more expensive, so uh, what we do usually is a selective uh, option, you know, and for some cases we use the bare metal stands, for some cases we use the, the covered stand. And uh, as uh, Omar already mentioned, I would just uh, uh, encourage to use the IBUS. It's of, co of course, it is like, again, it's like uh, another expense for the procedure, but it gives you the best best information about uh, the extent of your of your stenting because you don't want to put too much stent into the aorta. On the other hand, you don't want to miss the stenosis part, you know, the, the compression part. And distally, there is always an issue where you're supposed to stay with your stent either in the common iliac or you extend it into the external iliac because of the uh, different diameter. And in this case, the VB extends gives you option to dilate the bigger diameter in the common iliac and smaller diameter in the external, so you can taper the stand and gives you and gives you the the best result. And uh, and I think this is all about the technical details. It needs like it's, it needs a meticulous planning. Sometimes it's looking very easy and and simple procedure, but it's not simple procedure. And especially the long term results might be. <clears throat> might depend on your techniques you know so for the what what is very good about this procedure is that it not it's not closing the door so that's why we are you know we are quite uneasy to indicate uh, these procedures because you can always go for out the bifemoral bypass later on yeah this is uh, another point yes uh, i want to, to ask uh, from uh, uh, making a good registry. Do you think 
uh, it is logic to keep every center choose his technique and indication for uh, deciding the procedure. I know with this, it's going to be always an issue because you, you don't have a universal, you know, uniform way of doing it because the, each operator are using different techniques. As, and he, as Samir mentioned already, even the individual operator can change the technique, you know, in development. It's, uh, and, and what is limiting factor, actually the most important, is always availability of the stands and materials, you know. You have different mm -hmm. stands available, we have different stands available. At the moment you don't have a proper size, you know. So it's very difficult to, to, to unify the, the procedure in this way. Yes, yes, another point. Uh, probably, uh, if I may, uh, Ayman. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, one tiny comment. Uh, the beauty of, of uh, the paper we are discussing is that it is reproducible, even in Egypt, because we have the material and lots of cases, uh, relatively. Uh, however, um, as opposed to what was mentioned by Dr. Ahmed Arif, uh, we need to reduce the amount of variables we are comparing, not as he mentioned that we more variables are needed to, to, to improve the paper. Actually, uh, less variables to be compared would be even more statistically significant and that might have an impact on the, our practice uh, in, in, indeed. So, um, calcification may vary and as they mentioned, like 50% of the cases uh, they have uh, recruited of those who, uh, among the 1,336 um, had variable calcifications, so 50% uh, were moderate to severe. So if you can think of a similar uh, research based on this particular paper in the future, and, and, and in, the, in, in the centers that are represented uh, right now in Egypt, uh, you in Alexandria, uh, or also and me in Cairo, we could focus on the moderate to severe calcification, the orthopedic bifurcation, and then see the behavior of the cover stents versus the bare metal stents on the one hand, and then on the other hand, um, uh, the outcome measures uh, we have used also, among them was the, um, the ABIs and in some diabetics, measuring the ABIs, maybe giving you, you a false positive results, of course. So, uh, reducing the amount of the variables that are being compared and focusing on either diabetics alone or the non-diabetics. That would be probably a good approach uh, to be on this, uh, this paper. Thank you. Thank you, Ahmed. I think Samer want to add uh, something. Please go ahead, Ahmed. Uh, Samer? Yeah, I just want to say my opinion about the paper, couldn't say that, you know. Uh, I don't think this paper will change my practice. I mean, it's a good paper, but I don't think it is very strong paper because the retrospective is multi-center, you know. A lot of variants, they have no control on them. They don't have control on the technique. They don't have control on the what the device they use. Uh, where if you look at that COBUS study trial, which is a prospective, you know, it was a single center, it was strong trials. And it showed very clearly that for lesion C and D, cover stent is better latency than uh, bare metal stent. Even they have an update to five years latency uh, follow-up on COVID trial and all showed that better latency. So I uh, still think for C and D lesion, uh, cover stent is better latency than bare metal stent. Uh, even this paper, they said not, they, they didn't really answer, it was like uncovered, they said for severe calcification it's better, for EBI is better, so it was not very clear, but I still think for C and D lesion, cover stent is better. The main issue is this paper, they use a self-expandable cover stent, which we don't use it now, you know, uh, because I think it cannot use it in the aortic iliac, because they have a very calcification, very heavy plaque, so if you use a self-expandable cover stent, I don't think you have enough strength to keep the the iliac open, so usually like via bun or something like that. But I think the only reason they use it because of the length, because all bun and that was thin, they come short, so they need length uh, stent. The reason, the reason why they use a via band. 
but now we have a VBX, which is balloon expandable stent, that can come up to 10 centimeters. So now we have legacy to use the balloon expandable stent. So I think in the iliac, it's better always to use a balloon expandable uh, cover stent for the common iliac. If I have to expand to the external iliac, then I use uncovered self-expandable stent for external iliac. But for common iliac, I always use a balloon expandable cover stent. And this is what the COVID the trial talk about the balloon expandable cover stent. So this is the difference between two trials. But I still think COBIS trial is the base for that, for aortic occlusive disease, and I still think that for CD and lesion, I think the cover stent uh, give you a better option. The only issue I really sometimes is worrying me that when I have, I find a large collaterals coming out from the mid aorta, you know? And this worries me because if I cover it, then if this stent occluded, then patient may go to the really worst symptoms. But now when I stop doing, this was worry when I use a syrup technique, but now when I use the VBX2 uh, cover stent, you know, long cover stent, there's still space between the stents, so this collateral still get flow. So it make me feel more uncomfortable now to go and use that. The reason why I stop using syrup and I use now a long VBX cover stent. Thanks. This is a good point. Uh, as you said, this is a good paper, uh, uh, prospective uh, study, and this is the registry and not uh, a documented technique, and they did not uh, unify their uh, theology, and that's why I was asking um, if you depend on uh, this registry with uh none uh, or ununiform technique uh, it is dangerous to take it like that it is good registry and it gives a good result and they made a very good uh, statistical analysis but still i think the weakest point that they uh, they have non uh, unified uh, methodology that make it uh, a little bit uh, weak point and uh, being a retrospective one this is another point I, I would like to go to Ahmed Ahmed Al Arif let me ask you Ahmed uh, thank you you did a very good job and a very good analysis let me ask you uh, you yourself did you get uh, some benefits from analyzing this paper and did you uh, make a good opportunity to expose to this uh, methodology and uh, this statistical analysis for the paper and you, you find it it's enough to, uh, to get your uh, uh, conclusion? Um, yes, uh, Dr. Ivan. Uh, uh, in fact, this paper changed uh, our practice. Uh, previously, as uh, Dr. Mohammed uh, Omar Farouk uh, mentioned, uh, we used the casing uh, technique uh, uh, just uh, also the stent, just protruding in the water, just uh, touching each other. Uh, while uh, the correct uh, or the uh, ancient uh, technique in this study uh, uh, described the casing technique as being also stents parallel and protruding into bits of water. In fact, uh, this um, uh, the previous uh, way uh, where we put the uh, casing distance, uh, we faced many cases uh, with recurrence of the uh, symptoms and uh, re-occlusion of pedestal aorta, or uh, at least one of the areas. Great, thank you, Ahmed. Uh, I may ask uh, Dr. Ali Murad, uh, please unmute yourself, uh, Professor Ali. Uh, I'd like to give your impression about uh, the paper, the presentation of Ahmed, and uh, please uh, give us your input about uh, this paper. Um, uh, good evening. Uh, um, I think this, uh, I, I really have to say I enjoyed uh, this meeting very, very much. Um, I enjoyed the uh, presentation of uh, Ahmed Al Arif. Uh, he did a very good analysis for the uh, for the paper, and also the the great panelist. Also, the, uh, uh, I uh, heard a lot of from them, and all of their comments were were, were very very valuable. And uh, uh, as we think, we, we still uh, I may need um, 
uh, more uh, more studies uh, and more controlled studies to answer this question because really there is a, a lot a lot of question marks in this uh, in this study and in this uh, in this uh, problem um, I, I think we still need uh, more more control than the most controlled studies to uh, to answer this question uh, but the paper itself I think it is uh, variable and it uh, it uh, put it highlight uh, some important issues um, that's regarding the paper and the, the night but uh, a few words about the uh, uh, the idea itself uh, Ayman I would like to thank you very much for uh, doing the Georgia Club actually uh, this is uh, something which is very useful for both the juniors and for the seniors so I would like to thank you very much for the effort you, you are doing. Um, thank you very much and thank you for our lead panelists. Thank you, Professor Ali. Uh, now I'm, say, uh, I'm seeing that uh, Dr. Mohammed Salah Kabis uh, raising his hand. Please, Mohammed, uh, unmute yourself. Right, good evening, Dr. Ali. Thank you for the, uh, this journal club. It's really amazing and great work. Uh, actually, I have one more uh, question for Dr. Samuel. With the VBX, uh, you are using the Aorta and the Elex, Dr. Samuel. Uh, and if you have to stand the external Elex, what kind of bare metal self expandable stent you use to continue the, uh, the stenting? And uh, thanks a lot for your input. Thanks, everyone. Uh, I mean, there are a lot available in the market. I don't think it's a major difference with the self-expandable stent, you know. Uh, but we use the one from Metronics, but I think you can use any self-expandable stent uh, uncovered. The reason why, again, because I don't want to cover the internal iliac with a cover stent. Unless you, the second thing is that a cover stent is very stiff for the external iliac. You know, external iliac usually is a tortuous and a small artery. So I feel the cover stent is too much fabric inside the external iliac. It, most, it can cause occluded. So even in complete occlusion external iliac, I don't like to put a cover stand. I always use uncovered self-expandable stand. But anything available in the market, really all of them is, it, it is, you know, I mean, viable options. Because not many things like in the SFA or BTL, where you have to really very selective with your cover, uh, with your balloon expand, with self-expandable cover stand. And the external iliac, not much, you know. Uh, power or you know compression there, so anyone will work. But uh, the mm -hmm. most important, don't cross the inguinal ligament. I don't cross the inguinal ligament. You know. Great. This is okay, the you, good answer. Uh, Omar, uh, I think you want to have a comment, please, Omar. Yes, I would just have uh, a quick comment. Um, the use of a covered aortoiliac reconstruction with covered stent compared to bare metal stent, the cost is not the same. The cost is at least three to four times uh, that. I have done it both ways for many years, and uh, I have seen the acute ischemia with a limb occlusion in case of covered stent and uncovered stent. And the rapid development of symptoms when you get patient with an occluded stent, then you will get maybe within six hours you can lose the limb. That is why people in Egypt which don't have the, the very good care like, like Samir have with his patient, I think putting a covered aortoiliac stent in someone, let us say, in a village in Egypt is really catastrophic. I have seen so many stents in the iliac occluded. Patient can either have minimal symptom or give you enough time to solve his problem. This doesn't happen when you cut off the collateral. This is number one. Number two, I don't think this paper can be repeated because there is a new kid over the block, which is the lithotripsy catheter. Lithotripsy catheter by really dissolving iliac calcification have made a new equation. Now, the COPIST trial can be repeated after lithotripsy catheter to both arm. Um, I have um, some conversation with people in the United States which got FDA approval with lithotripsy catheter. Now, the, it seems a result with severe calcification in C and D lesion with um, cover distance seem to be fantastic doesn't have the same advantage we are using uncovered distance. So this is new to the equation. 
also another point that I would like to add, because Professor Nahas said he preferred to do transfemoral approach in these cases. I think the double approach, transbrachial, transfemoral, in all cases is the safest option. You can, I usually do recanalization from above and stenting from below, but people do it the other way around. But I agree with the point of Samer when he said, when you go subintimal into the aorta, you are in very dangerous territory. You cannot control the subintimal plane. And if you increase the flow, this plane can go up. Some people use off-label use of uh, many devices to do re-entry to the aorta. But if you don't have a good theater, a good equipment, it's really dangerous. I have used out back few cases to go into the aorta. I have done re-entry at high level and regret it. So my advice, maybe let us say to young staff, always prepare yourself with double approach, transbrachial, transfemoral. Don't rely on one approach. Secondly, you always have a thrombus sucking device. Whenever you do an aortoiliac lesion, don't get surprised if you got a big plaque occluding your femoral artery. No, this happened in 5% of cases. You should prepare for it. So either I use either the Cox thrombus sucking device or Rotarex. Thirdly, it seems the equation with the lithotripsy catheter is going to be revolutionized. Fourthly, the cost in our country with the follow-up, which is not that much like in Saudi Arabia, which have very excellent health system, we don't have it in Egypt. So I won't prefer to have a patient paying maybe 200,000 Egyptian pounds for total covered aortoiliac um, stenting, and he is living far away. When he gets acute ischemia, I know within six hours this leg will be dead because I cut off his collateral, maybe his internal iliac on one side, and then this is the problem. So the message I think to Junior that I want to summarize is this few tips with dealing with aortoiliac disease. Definitely aortoiliac endovascular intervention is here to stay. And again, with aortoiliac covered stent, this does not prevent you from doing a crossover. You still can do crossover if you use a septostomy knife from cardiologist, which a trick I have used from cardiologist. So you can puncture either uncovered stent or covered stent, it doesn't matter. You can do crossover in either ways. It doesn't have a problem. But I agree totally with what Samer said because he have a huge experience. He initially was very enthusiastic with our to iliac disease. I'm sure he ran into few problems with that. He got the lesson and now he have the perfect decision-making process. You know which patient he will use uncovered and which patient he will use the cover distance. So I think this is the my input as an experience to this very, very difficult topic. Thank you, Omar. Uh, uh, I, I, I agree with you. Uh, let me just say one side. I agree with you, Omar, 100%, you know. Uh, I agree with you 100%, Omar. And uh, yes, I mean, uh, you have to tellerize, uh, you know, you, you, you know, where you live. It's no, it's no questions, you know. I mean, yes, the metal stand is not bad and still work very well. I agree with that. And you don't cut the collaterals, you know. It is safer, you know. Uh, so I agree with that. But when you talk in general, we talk in general. But I think you have to individualize your technique. I agree 100%. You know, you have the second thing is that with the use cover technique, the stand, you're going to use a larger, larger sheath. And most of the patients, they have already come from artery disease. So this also you increase your... Uh, your uh, uh, puncture side complication. You have to take that in your considerations, you know. So a lot of things you have to think about it. But don't be rigid. No, this is what the COVID study said. Yes, I have to use a cover stand, you know. Uh, sometimes you can give up a little difference in brain latency for, for, for other reasons, you know. So try to individualize your patients and don't be very stubborn that no, cover stand is better. I think both are fine and very good tools. Uh, and just individualize your patients. Yes, you know what I love about you, Samer? Your wisdom. Your wisdom is <laughs> oh, really? fantastic. And this is, you cannot buy. You can't buy the wisdom of decision making. It's really a beauty. You put actually 30 years of very, very uh, busy practice, and you really got the nutshell of a wise decision maker, which for junior staff, I think this is the most valuable that we can offer them. That's wrong. Thank you very yeah. much, Sam. Thank you. Thank you, Ahmed.
Okay, thank you, Omar. Uh, thank you, Samer. Uh, I would like to emphasize four points uh, as wrapping uh, our talk today. Uh, number one, we have, uh, in case of casing stent, we have to have uh, at least pigtail through brachial approach to tell us so where are we going and uh, to use it as an alternative and uh, uh, as we say, a safety net uh, in hand. Uh, it, this is very important. Uh, from my point of view, uh, number two, uh, I prefer to go uh, translumen retrograde approach, uh, uh, sorry, a uh, subintimal approach for the iliac. Uh, I, from my point of view, it will be dangerous and it may end by rupture of the iliac vessel. And as you see in this registry, they have five cases of uh, rupture uh, external iliac and this is a huge number to have. Uh, please, uh, I would like to emphasize, we like to always be transillumin uh, as, uh, as much as we can. Uh, number three, comparing both covered stent with uncovered stent, depending uh, about the calcification and the, the patency and the longevity of the stent, uh, sure for calcified vessel, Covered stent is better, but uh, as uh, we compare for the longevity and the patency rate, both uh, may be equal. Uh, the last point, uh, uh, we, we usually stent the vessel from uh, healthy to healthy. From the start, don't try to prepare uh, the case. The patient has total occlusion of the uh, both iliacs and